Welcome to the Renal Point of Care Ultrasound Module. This module is an educational tool designed to instruct clinicians on how to diagnose hydronephrosis and its gradations using point of care ultrasound and distinguish true hydronephrosis from possible confounders. This particular module will focus on image interpretation and not image acquisition. During the course of this tutorial, we will review renal anatomy as it pertains to point of care ultrasound, discuss how to diagnose hydronephrosis on ultrasound and grade its severity on the spectrum of mild, moderate, and severe, and finally, we'll briefly review some possible pitfalls and mimics of hydronephrosis commonly encountered in renal sonography. Renal anatomy. Surrounded by a brightly echogenic fibrous capsule, each kidney can be divided into two distinct anatomical parts the renal parenchyma, composed of the renal cortex and the medullary pyramids, and the renal sinus. The parenchyma surrounds the sinus on all sides except at the hilum, where the renal artery enters and the renal vein and ureter exit the kidney on its medial concave surface. Urine is filtered through the cortex and the medullary pyramids, is excreted via the apical papilla, and enters the calyces, eventually merging with the renal pelvis. The pelvis represents the proximal end of the ureter as it exits the kidney. Notice the prominent presence within the renal sinus of fatty tissue, an extension of the perinephric fat. The latter point has great application in sonography as the sinus fat appears hyperechoic or bright on ultrasound relative to the hypoechoic or grainy appearance of the renal parenchyma, thus creating the sonographic double density of the kidney. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the components of normal renal anatomy. Here we have a sonographic representation of a normal left kidney in sagittal plane. A simplified schematic is provided in the upper right corner for comparison. You can appreciate that the renal cortex is of similar echogenicity to the adjacent liver or spleen, and that the fluid-filled medullary pyramids are demonstrated in a regular arrangement around the sinus, and in this example appear very dark and prominent. The central echoes from the renal sinus are hyperechoic or bright due to the fat content, and the sinus is appropriately collapsed and homogeneous in the absence of obstruction. Note that one can normally see small dark pockets of urine within the bright sinus. Also keep in mind that the ureter is often obscured by bowel gas and not visible on ultrasound unless dilated. When distended, it appears as a tubular structure extending inferiorly from the renal pelvis. Now let's look at a diagram illustrating normal kidney along the various grades of hydronephrosis from mild, moderate, and severe. As distal obstruction to urinary flow develops, progressively enlarging anechoic or dark areas begin to form centrally within the hyperechoic or bright sinus. This is known as hydronephrosis. The degree of hydronephrosis is therefore a continuum that has been broken down into mild, moderate, and severe categories. Though somewhat arbitrary, these categories are of clinical significance. Studies have demonstrated a correlation between the degree of hydronephrosis and stone size. And most algorithms for the emergency department evaluation and management of renal colic incorporate the degree of hydro into the decision-making pathway. Mild hydro is defined as enlargement of calyces with preservation of renal papilla. Moderate hydro is characterized by rounding of calyces with obliteration of renal papilla and blunting of the pyramids. This appearance is often described as a glove-like splaying of the sinus akin to a bear claw. Severe hydro is defined as caliceal ballooning with cortical thinning. Now let's look at a few examples of the different grades of hydronephrosis on ultrasound. Here we have two examples of mild hydronephrosis in the bottom half of the page and a normal kidney for comparison in the upper right corner. Notice the mild central dilation of the predominantly hyperechoic sinus. Comparing the sonographic appearance of mild hydro to that of normal kidney, one can appreciate that the renal architecture is undisturbed for the most part in the presence of mild hydronephrosis. Here we have a more prominent example of mild hydronephrosis. Although all the appropriate anatomical landmarks are preserved in this case, you can appreciate the significant central dilation of the hyperechoic renal sinus. Note, however, that the pyramids are not blunted, and the sinus is not splayed like we see in moderate hydro, which we'll review next. So rather than the degree of pelvic dilation, which is indeed more prominent in this example,
it is the preservation of the renal pyramids that characterizes mild hydronephrosis. Now please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the spectrum of mild hydronephrosis. Recall that mild central dilation of the sinus and preservation of renal anatomy characterize mild hydro on ultrasound. Here we have an example of moderate hydronephrosis in the bottom left corner and a case of prominent mild hydro for comparison in the upper right corner. In moderate hydro, progressive dilation of the calyces leads to glove-like splaying of the sinus and ballooning out of the medullary pyramids. As a result, this appearance has been compared to that of a bear claw. Here we have two examples of moderate hydronephrosis in the bottom half of the page and a case of prominent mild hydro for comparison in the upper right corner. Notice the glove-like splaying of the sinus and ballooning out of the medullary pyramids creating the appearance of bear claw in moderate hydronephrosis. In the image on right, you can further appreciate the dilated renal pelvis and proximal ureter. Notice that the preservation of outer cortex is a distinguishing factor between moderate and severe hydronephrosis. Now please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the spectrum of moderate hydronephrosis. Recall the features of moderate hydro, namely the glove-like splaying of the sinus and ballooning out of the medullary pyramids, leading to the distinctive appearance of bear claw while preserving the integrity of outer cortex. Here we have two examples of severe hydronephrosis in the bottom half of the page and a case of moderate hydro for comparison in the upper right corner. You can see that the previously noted finger-like projections which characterized moderate hydro have now coalesced into one large anechoic bag of urine that completely obliterates the sinus and the medullary pyramids. All that remains of the renal architecture is a rim of outer cortex. Here in our last example of severe hydro, notice that the entire sinus and pyramids are completely shelled out by the anechoic urine and all that remains is a rim of atrophied cortex surrounding the hydronephrotic kidney. Note the total distortion of normal renal architecture, the key distinguishing feature of severe hydronephrosis. Now please take a moment to review the spectrum of severe hydronephrosis. Recall the features of severe hydro. Complete obliteration of the renal sinus and the medullary pyramids by the anechoic bag of urine and variable degree of cortical thinning. Now let's talk about hydromimics. When distinguishing between true hydro and its mimics on real time, two guiding principles should be followed. First, always trace the suspected hydronephrotic area to the renal pelvis. If they coalesce, you have hydro, and if they don't, you have a mimic. Second, always scan the area of interest in both the longitudinal and transverse planes to delineate the shape and borders of the structure of interest. Now let's quickly review some of the common mimics of hydronephrosis. Let's start with cortical cysts. They are dark, smooth-walled, and fluid-filled spherical structures usually located in the cortex or the periphery of the kidney, far from the collecting system. They maintain this appearance in all planes of imaging and do not connect with the pelvis. Polycystic kidney disease represents an extreme example on the spectrum of renal cystic disease. Note the abundance of irregular cysts of varying sizes that both enlarge and obliterate the normal renal architecture. The disease is always bilateral, therefore, when in doubt, scan both kidneys for comparison. Parapelvic cysts are much less common compared to cortical cysts, but are easily confused with hydronephrosis due to their relatively central location within the sinus. They can be differentiated from true hydro, however, due to their round shapes and presence of a thin, well-defined capsule around them. Furthermore, they do not communicate with the renal pelvis on real-time scanning. Thank you for reviewing this tutorial on the recognition and grading of hydronephrosis on point-of-care ultrasound. We hope to show that an emergency physician's ability to detect and grade hydronephrosis accurately can have significant influence on how we manage renal colic in the emergency department. This concludes our brief module. The post-test is next. Please continue until the very end. We thank you for your help in conducting point-of-care ultrasound education research.